Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 9 of Installation Route, where, uh, I guess as usual, we'll start off with a review of what we accomplished yesterday. In this case, we'll take a look at our uh, power system here, making uh, power from blazing pyrothium. So the inputs for this all come from a mob farm that we set up. It's chilling off in that corner, we'll take a look at that in a second. But um, they're supplied via requesters. Blaze rods get pulverized. Combined with sulfur and redstone, get crafted, get melted into blazing pyrothium, which then gets turned into power in some dynamos. And uh, it seems that this is working well now. It's easily scalable. We can add more dynamos. Well, there's not much room to add dynamos. I'm sure we could figure something out. Um, but yeah, we can add more dynamos. We can add more... Uh, we can upgrade the tier of the dynamo soon, yada yada yada. So, let's also take a look at our mob farm just to see how much stuff is backlogged in there. Ow. Should do something about that fall damage eventually. Uh, oh wow, that's actually a lot of redstone and glowstone. Is that 3300? Or is that 2300? That's a 3, right? A little hard to tell. Uh, I guess we don't use that much redstone in our uh, crafting, because I think we produce these two in equal quantities. Um, but anyways... 1800 blades rods and a ton of sulfur so all things considered we are in good shape mob wise and we can scale that if needed as well so uh let's eat the heal and uh take a look at what we started working on a little bit at the end of yesterday but now we have to get into proper and that is the making of these prepared shells ultimately with the goal of uh making the energy core and we have to make a lot of energy cores to make the fission reactor here all right so um i did a little bit of testing with this process in creative just to understand how it works so step one is to craft the shell that's pretty obvious step two is to fill it with energy but you only have to fill it once actually you go from a prepared shell to an unprimed core by filling it with energite. So you don't have to fill it 80 times like I suspected before. That's good. Energite's kind of a hassle to make. Um, and the fact that we only have to do it once makes this process a lot easier. So then you get this 1% charged unprimed energy core. What we have to do with this is to stabilize it. Or no, not yet. We have to uh, get it up to 80% charge. So there's a charging station i believe it's what it's called a core charger that charges energy cores and the longer the energy core sits in this machine the higher charge it gets so it's just you put it in there for long enough such you know for it to get to 80 percent preferably without blowing it up that would be nice and uh yeah when it's when you get it to charge at around 80 percent you take it out dump it in a stabilization table which gets you the actual energy core so it's a lot of steps and uh, let's take them one one at a time. I'm gonna try to batch craft a stack of these because there's so many steps, I'm not quite sure how to approach the automation yet. And when I'm unsure about automation, my solution is always to fall back on batch crafting. All right, so prepared shells it is. Um, we detoured to power last time, right? Because I upgraded too many machines that started running too fast, but now that that's been taken care of, let's see, we should have lapis dust somewhere. It's probably in the output chest here stacks of lapis dust i made a bunch of pulverized aluminum which you just have to smelt thank you so i think we're now to the point where all that's left in the prepared shell is these two stacks of circuit boards did i start this process i did but it only oh I, i'm not withdrawing from this thing so we we only buffer us all right whatever i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for this to make the other stack of it and then fill it with uh does it have to be copper? Looks like it does. All right, so yeah, we have to fill it with the fluid transposer and then arc furnace it. I think I have to give up on my dreams of using exact numbers when dealing with uh, filling these plates, especially when filling it with copper. The only way to melt copper is to get 325 millibuckets from melting an ore, and uh, we only spend it in multiples of 75. So um, the least common denominator or the ratio of uh ores in to product out is 13 or three ores completes 13 circuit boards so a very weird ratio so i'm probably not going to bother trying to maintain an exact ratio and we'll just have leftover fluid to void in the fluid transposer when we're done with the job yeah whatever not a big deal 
while the rest of our plates uh, or what are these circuits get etched and then whatever, let's work on automating the rest of the factory tech mod. So most of the difficulty in using this mod comes from the, the fact that almost all of these machines need tools. And, well, they literally all need tools. And some of these tools take multiple crafting steps to make. So I've been tackling that so far by just batch crafting them. But as you can see here, this machine's about to run out of motors. Like we have these four motors left. Um, I want to set up a system that will automatically craft and then supply all of our factory tech machines with the appropriate tools as needed. So um, let's start from the beginning. And from the beginning probably means we start with the simplest tools. That's stuff like the metal cutter. Uh, we need to be able to craft... We need to be able to do some simple, like, 3x3 three three grid crafting and some stuff like pulverizing on demand. Let's start with 3x3 three three crafting automation. So I just built a bunch of sequential fabricators. Each one can only handle a single recipe. So we're not terribly space efficient here, but this is the best we can do for now. Um, anyways... Uh, these five recipes here are the first ones we need. So if we import it into, if we import the recipe into the sequential fabricator, the crafter actually has a convenient import button. Um, and that's all there is to it. Now the system knows how to craft copper gears. So we do the same with the dynamo. Import that. Uh, we do have to actually turn the recipes on too. Make sure you check the enable button. And if you set the import side to either... Um, like either this mode, the can see everything mode, or input output, uh, they're equivalent for purposes of um, of this automation. The difference is that input output mode, you can only input these slots, you can only output that one. Whereas in this mode, you can the system is allowed to extract from these slots. In practice, it doesn't matter if you are in input output mode. Make sure you disable auto output. Yeah, whatever. That doesn't matter. Um, I'm just gonna. Disable auto output anyways, even though I don't think it does anything. But um, yeah, I'm going to go through and import all of these recipes. So there's this motor here. Yep, I wanted to use... Oopsies. Import it to here first. Yep. And I wanted to use the steam dynamo. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm going to go through and import all of these recipes. Do I have to check this checkbox? I'm not sure. When setting up these crafters, it is somewhat important, although probably not strictly necessary, to set the maximum items in inventory set. Uh, for items with, like, the gear, it totally doesn't matter. For, for a recipe like this, if you don't set this at all, right, you leave it at infinite, and if you happen to be short on one of these ingredients, you could end up in a worst-case scenario where all these slots get, like, all the input slots get filled by, you know, the iron, copper, redstone, and say, for some reason, your redstone transmission coils take a long time to craft. Spoiler, they don't, but what if it did, right? Um, you could end up filling all the slots with the other items and get stuck. So, uh, by setting this to any reasonable number, you're not going to cause that to get stuck. Now, that'll never happen unless you order, like, 300 plus steamed dynamos at a time but um it's i don't know good to defend against such cases defensive programming as they say anyways um don't throw my shovel give me that back next up i want to automate a pulverizer so pulverizer recipes generally i'd say come in two flavors um and that is recipe we can make diamonds from nothing <laughs> um recipes that don't have secondary output and recipes that do so the crafter will only automatically withdraw the items that it, it you know expects to make that means it won't automatically withdraw secondaries so for this pulverizer here i'm only going to handle recipes that do not produce secondary output um thankfully that is most of the recipes that we care for so uh you know pretty convenient um but yeah now this pulverizer then i have two recipes in it we can turn drill heads into rough drill bits and saw blades into cutting saw blades because the machine is only capable of handling one recipe at a time you put it in parallel mode or sorry in series mode if you leave it on parallel mode it'll try to insert both items at a time one of them will just bounce i don't know what happens when items bounce in thermal logistics i don't know if it'll retry whereas um like logistics pipes retries eventually if items bounce at the destination but uh, i don't know if thermal logistics does the same or not um, i assume these stack to 64 so we'll set that to there and now we can even order rough drill bits and rough cutting blades so if we now come over to 
Uh, well, let's grab a requester. Let's see. Why does it... If I hold shift, those show up. Well, they don't show up if I don't hold shift. It's making it a little difficult. Wait, they become other... What? That's trippy. Anyways, I need one of you. Um, Now we can take this requester. Did I put my... I swear I just threw something on the ground. There we go. Um, we can take this requester and put it on... Let's see, what machine? This metal cutter needs it. So if we... How can I do this? Replace this piece of energy conduit. We're uh, breaking out the dire wire here with some of this. Nope, not there. Uh, let me up. With that, we can put a requester here and request up to 64. Or sorry, up to four because these items only stack to four. Can we drag in? Not from that side. Can we drag in from here? Drill bit. Nope. All right, no ghost items for me. Oh, wait, I don't want drill bits here. I want... What are they? Cutting blades and gears. So gears is pulver. Okay, we can add the gear recipe. This one, yeah. So I can... Drink some from here for now, I guess. Um, Put them into the requester. And now the requester will try to... If I enable it... We'll try to keep four of everything into in this hopper at any given time. So even if I empty it all out, let's put this away. It'll first try to grab item from storage before it grabs items from crafting. But once, you know, the storage is used up. Man, I want thin hoppers. Why must we have fat hoppers? Um, but yeah, once storage is used up, it'll go and try to craft things. So right now, the inventory lacks items, which means that the requester will request them. In fact, will the requester tell us what it's requesting? No, it won't. But we see the items have shown up here. So uh, yeah, this is how we can automatically supply tool bits to the uh, metal cutter and such. Um, because I'm emptying out a large buffer for now, it'll initially pull from the buffer, right? But anyways, let me go add, uh, what item was it? Rough gears to our pulverizer output. Because the pulverizer can, like, it's a one input to one output slot. We can run it in four recipes mode. Unfortunately, there is no eight recipes mode. So four is the best we get. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave all of these machines here actually, just as manual ones and set up more of, you know, additional set or a couple sets of them up here for automation purposes. So for our metal cutter here, I'm directly supplying the bits into it now instead of going through a hopper. There's no need to go through a hopper hoppers is a buffer but this thing has a buffer of its own so that works fine um so uh inputs the top crafting items go in the side so both inputs and outputs come from here and in the case of the cutting machine it's all one to one which means that um we get to do it like this now if we need more sides technically we can use the front side as well um but the, anyways, when this thing is done, it's spent bits will get put into the crate, which I'm extracting with the servo into storage. Um, and then most of these spent bits, if we care, we can recycle them. So like the gear, it's probably a case of I don't care to recycle it, but uh, a broken gear can be recycled into three tin nuggets. That I'm probably not gonna bother recycling, but um, for some other parts like the motor, which uses a dynamo, uh, the motor when it breaks down can be recycled to get the transmission coil back, which is like 99% of the cost of the dynamo anyways, right? Because there's a silver ingot in there. Um, so yeah, with that, we can uh, recycle and get most of the important bits of the, uh, of the input ingredients back out. As I continue to add more machines up here, I've uh, made a couple changes. First of all, I'm picking up the broken bits with a vacuum later now because um, they all share the same item ID, they just have different meta values, metadata values. So if I grab any broken thing, I also put a terminal up here so I can access my items without having to break my bones jumping down there. Uh, I'm sure there's some way I can get down without breaking my bones, but I've just been jumping down and taking fall damage every time, uh, which is not the best for my legs. But anyways, we can set this to whitelist ignore metadata and that'll pull in all the broken stuff and only the broken stuff 
Um, but we don't need to put quite as many crates on, you know, in our automation space. All right. So uh, going from here, the circuit scribe is the next machine I wanted to automate. We have all the parts for it automated. So it's just a matter of we need to, there's four different circuit types. Thus, we need four different circuit scribes. And with this, I never have to mess with the stupid circuit clicky game again. Um, I'm choosing to do it all on demand. Effectively, every single one of these things, these requesters knows how to recursively craft. So if I ask for something, it'll it'll know to, you know, go hit the sequential fabricator to make the heating element. This is functionally similar to the crafting card in Applied Energistics, but due to the size of the network, that is, it's much smaller network than Applied Energistics, much more compact crafting tree, I don't expect we'll run into uh, crafting time calculation performance issues could be wrong if we do then well i did this to myself but um it's much easier to not have to passively craft this way we can do it you know doing it on demand even if it's on demand through automation is easier than doing it passively all right so um yeah now we can order any of these etched plates i believe we look in here yeah like if we t let's test it out give me 64 of these etched i don't even know what number i ordered etched one the one I think is this. I forget if I went left or no, I went right to left. Uh like any sane person does. So we should see the plates or the circuit plates, yeah. Blocks of quartz, whatever, get dumped into here, where they get cut. Then they get dumped into here. I don't know if they have to go all the way back to they might have to go to an intermediate inventory before they're willing to head back to here. It looks like they're not wait, no. Is this the right one? Hold on. Which one did I order again? Four, right? Double check here. Pattern one, never mind. Pattern... Oh no, this is working. They, I guess uh, maybe the, the UI just sets an update while I have it open. But anyways, yeah, the, the plates eventually work their way into the scribe, where they get etched, and then... Um, uh, we get the item out. Next step then is we need to set up two sets of fluid transposers, one filled with gold, one filled with copper, because sometimes we want to gold fill them and sometimes we want to copper fill them. From there, um, I think both of these, are there any other uses for either molten gold or molten copper besides filling this stuff? I can't imagine we're ever going to make uh, blocks that way. So no, I think I'm gonna have to set up something that will input the etch plates and output the uh final product the you know basically put the whatever the metal in it and then arc furnace it and then we'll call it you know we'll call that one step of the process instead of having to go through like instead of nesting it with multiple crafting steps turns out i'm telling a lot of lies today uh for the fluid or for the filling of the gold and copper into the thing i decided to do it as two steps so first step is, well, first step is to fill the plates, second step is to arc furnace them. Um, the raw materials are supplied into a crucible, the crucibles also get their, like, their uh, mixing blades and heating elements through requesters. The crafting pipe is back here, or the, the, the requester to get the uh, thing to melt is back here. Then out the front side, we extract the fluid, send them into two different fluid trans posers yeah and there's a crafting thingy back here uh conveniently it holds four recipes and there are four types of plates so works out um these fill the plates and then there's another recipe here on the arc furnace that takes the filled plates and turns them into boards and i'm using both sides of the arc furnace because there's gold and copper uh, because the total quantity of boards demanded i think will be reasonably low um i think i'm like doing it on demand should be okay it does mean that if i order 128 of them it'll take a relatively long time before i see all 128 but generally speaking we order like one at a time because you know if we're if this agitator or, you know an agitator needs a board well we order one you know the system will automatically order one for it as opposed to needing to constantly uh constantly order you know as needed so anyways um i'm gonna take these and just by dropping them into the system they should automatically get recycled now because i set up also a recycler up here that uh 
like before all of these machines have their input top being the like the bits that they consume um this one has a well let's just extract the final product in a retriever pulling in so i'm using a retriever instead of a crafter here because practically it doesn't matter i should never you know i should never have a crafting recipe that results in a broken part that would be a silly crafting recipe to have but um the retriever pulls them all here whitelist ignore metadata and then they get broken down all right so um yeah with that we should be able to actually order the last of our circuits so we needed for these energy cores uh shells. here we go we needed copper pattern two of which we have zero i think we have 64 of them laying around somewhere i made partial progress on this handcrafting while we were waiting oh look there's more stuff to be recycled um how far did i get oh look they're as done as these get let me uh apparently these only stack to four which is a little annoying it's gonna make the actual crafting step coming up a little bit more troublesome we can deal with that so i assume that's that was probably 50 and this is the other 14 so if i order another uh circuit let's see oh wait no i apparently have all 128 already ordered okay well then let's test the system out by ordering a bunch of these so how many do i have because these are the ones i use the most i think that number is 35 yeah gold pattern four goes into the uh goes into the agitators and agitators i guess technically they can probably use copper circuit four too i don't know what the difference is I presume gold is at least as good, maybe better. Um, but yeah, since agitators are the machines that we're going to be using next, I'm just going to test out our system by ordering a bunch of gold circuit fours. Where are they? Here. So if I ask for 64, it should kick off the entire processing chain. And then again, because we're asking for 64 at a time, It'll take it, you know, it'll take its sweet time to make all 64. Uh, let's circuit one. All right, we hear one machine spool up. That's good. So this should spool up. Then those materials should come here. This should spool up. Once that etches, we should see materials coming to here. Come on. I believe in the Nice. When that's done, that should go into here. Come on, get it. There we go. Process automation. It's beautiful. So now uh, the circuits are automated, which means that while I still think the process that goes into them is silly, at least it's silly in a way that all I have to do is click a button and wait. Um, nice, and then they'll eventually end up in here. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's grab these, set up this recipe, uh, which is a recipe for these prepared shells. Let's see what order they go. In fact, can I? There we go. And then fill in these gaps. Um, all right, and then I just need the rest of the 112 of these. I hope they can all fit in here. But uh, we can start crafting these. Oh, good, these even stack. What goes in that slot? There we go. All right, so anyways, uh, yeah, these only stack to four, which means we can only craft four at a time. But I'm going to craft the entire stack of prepared shells. All done. Then we have to fill it with Energite. So let's set up a process for crafting Energite. Um, this requires lumium dust alloy. It has to be made on the engineering table. So I'm just going to like, bulk craft that by hand. Um, but I think there's one other thing in here. So essence of knowledge, that's experience. That's trivial. Sulfuric acid, I think, is just sulfur and water. Uh, so this is, let's see, monster dust. We have to set up a mob disassembler. Okay, let's, in fact, let's pin that. Pin the mob disassembler. Silver, aluminum, iridium. Okay, that's a very literal name for what that is. That's easy. Glowstone, easy. Tin, easy, easy, easy. So all we need actually is monster dust. Let's build the mob disassembler and see what it does. Uh, in fact, let's see what it does first. So machine info, mob disassembler. Damages any creature except for players. Oh, nice. It doesn't even kill me for standing on it. It stands on top of. In addition, mobs that kill bat would drop much more loot than usual. Some may even drop loot they normally couldn't. The redstone signal disables it. 
circuit battery or saw blade battery circuit so we have to automate the production of batteries and uh we should be good all right let's make one of these seems easy what is beryllium no we have beryllium okay yeah, let's make one of those for that essence of knowledge of bucket i'll just fill a bucket in this fluid transposer every now and then i've been uh dropping in a new tome to hold exp we can enchant these with holding so that they hold like even more exp it's probably a good idea but um most of the exp is being voided because it's just going to this nullifier here unfortunately i don't think fluid pipes have any distribution settings in this pack at least not the thermodynamics ones so uh the half the exp is going to the fluid transposer half of it's getting voided Eh, whatever but after the fluid you know after our tomes fill up 100 percent of the exp is being voided so in the long run it doesn't like cost us any exp but in the short run it does result in us being a little bit less efficient not that i care all right so that's everything let's make one of these uh you go in there manually place that there do the thing um i suspect I'm gonna have to check something, but I'm pretty sure we can manually let mobs out of morbs, right? Let me craft a spare morb and test that. Uh, can we make this? Yes, we can. Make those, and then let's turn them into reusable morbs as well. Reuse. All right, Blaze, can you? Yep, you can deploy them that way. Um, that appears to have thrown them oh my gosh he can almost kill me uh that appears to have thrown the morb and i did not get it back can i have my morb back i'm gonna i'm kind of curious did something yoink it i have a lot of things around here that can yoink items but i don't think where'd the morb go it's out of my inventory huh yeah if we don't get them back that's a little annoying I tested it a few more times, and it seems like we do get the more back. Uh, I might have accidentally used an unreusable one or something. But anyways, before we can actually use the mob disassembler, we need to give it batteries, one of its components. So batteries are made in a fluid transposer by filling standard batteries, or by filling empty battery shells, which are pretty easy to make. Um, we do need to automate an induction smelter for this, but that's not that bad. So anyways, a standard battery or... Uh, Energite battery, which is just the more expensive version of it. We have to take another step with the sulfuric battery or the sulfuric acid. So um I guess we have to make some standard batteries first and then we can swap over to energite ones. I think using the higher tier battery causes the machine to either be faster or the component to last longer. I don't know. But uh sulfuric acid, this is also not how I'm used to spelling sulfuric acid. Um yeah, it's water plus liquid sulfur and liquid sulfur is made by crucibling sulfur ore which is uh chow cocktail chow whatever chocolate ore in a mana pool so uh we need another crucible and its bits um i think liquid sulfur is used for a couple other things as well is that true no i guess nothing else i care for sulfuric acid however uh is used for a couple other things i don't care for this recipe right because i already have an infinite supply of blaze powder um Sulfuric acid, however, is used... Oh no, it's only used to make energy? Is that true? Buckets of it are used to make the electroplater. Wait, but the electroplater uses this. Yeah, why doesn't it show up here? Factory tech, why do you do this to me? Um, the electroplater is a machine that can... Uh, it does the job mostly of... Uh, the pure daisy. That like can turn... Well, at least they can turn ores into their purified versions using... So I guess it 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 doesn't... I think it doesn't show up in JI because it doesn't actually use sulfuric acid. It uses a bar that looks like sulfuric acid with a text sulfuric acid. So, like, there's a broken reference here. You know, this doesn't actually reference the sulfuric acid fluid. This is just, like, a static picture. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Why why doesn't Factory Tech implement its J like half the stuff in Factory Tech doesn't have JEI integration. Right? Like this I can't I can't click. Why? Can't right click this. Why? I don't know. Whatever. Alright. So um 
Yeah, we're going to have to make a lot of sulfuric acid I, because or for the energy. I don't think we're going to end up using the electroplater much. Uh, like, it has this recipe for lapis, which is nice, I guess. It's slightly easier than the way we're currently making lapis. But it's, in my opinion, it's easier to automate the, uh, the pure daisy than it is to make a whole bunch of this stuff. So, yeah, we'll just make it make it as needed to make um enough for whatever energite and for filling batteries well yeah it doesn't show up in the filling battery thing either wait no it probably does it's right here never mind i'm crazy oh there's a sulfuric acid tank what does this do nothing nothing starting to get pretty messy up here it started off pretty clean but now it's uh there's a lot of stuff. So anyways, a crucible melts sulfur ore. Agitator mixes it with water. Uh, the water collection is huge because the aqueous accumulator is relatively large. But what can you do? Um, anyways, sulfuric acid, jam it into batteries. I think the sulfuric acid will also use... It's part of energy, right? Wait, what? That's... Well, no, it's something else. Hold on. Energy is, yeah, made with this. So, uh... Hey, there's a convenient another we'll extract the out the other side of this machine for the energy later but anyways that makes batteries which i think should let us begin oh look no broken bones coming down this time with this so that needs circuit three hopefully we have some circuit threes laying around oh look at that how convenient there's four of them cool so put one of these in here no Copper filled quartz plate. There's one more step missing. Please. All right, you do that real quick. In the meantime, let's grab a morb and test this out. I just want to make sure the mod grinder here kind of works the way we expect it to. Where does it output its items? It doesn't have an inventory. Probably just drops them in the world if I had to guess. Um, Are you done with your thing? Yeah. Right, let's put these away as well. All right, big moment of truth. Please work, please work. The mob died. It dropped the things that, like it dropped because of the fire charge. I'm, conv I'm convinced that this assembler killed it. However, uh, Blaze, okay, let's look at mob. I'm told that this is supposed to... Oh no, Blaze is... Okay, Blaze is a poor choice. Blaze don't drop monster dust. Uh, we're going to have to set something up with a different mob to do it. Probably... Probably zombie? Zombie produces things I... You know, I don't have rotten flesh or zombie head automation yet. Although string would be nice too. But caves... You know, spiders are larger. So yeah, I'll probably have to set something up like zombie or... Uh, I don't know. But um, we're out of time today. So that'll be next episode. We've got the... Uh, framework for it done we just have to set it up so all of today we managed to complete zero quests good job jimmy um but we got a lot of very important infrastructure built so you know this will make all of this stuff up here will make doing factory tech going forward a lot less painful than moving items around by hand which i suppose is probably the way it was intended so you know doing things right and man look at this dire wire Ooh, that's a disaster. All right, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.